I'll tell you about the Exodus. When Pharaoh let the, the people go, he changed his mind again. Can you imagine how it would being a slave and then not being a slave and then go humming back to a slave would be? How exhausting would that be? He changed his mind and went after them with his whole army. Christ. And Moses' people, the Israelites, were very scared. <laughs> Moses looked at the people and then looked at the sea that was supposed to cross. The sea just opened up them and they were parted. Wow. And the Israelites and Moses went right through that sea. <laughs> it's Ips and Dance. Give it. And when they were at the end at a beautiful place, the Egyptians came after them and crash. The sea came down. God makes a way. Moses and God's people escaped out of Egypt and into the wilderness. They didn't know the way, but God knew the way and he would show them. I will bring you to a new home, a special land, God promised them. I will look after you. I am with you. God sent a big cloud for them to follow, a pillar of smoke stretching up to the sky. It moved in front of them as they walked and shaded them from the blazing heat of the day. And when it was time to rest, it stopped. All through the cold desert nights, it kept them warm, glowing like a fire. God led his people through the desert to the edge of the great sea. They were just wondering how to cross it when, suddenly, they heard a terrible thundering and pounding. It sounded almost like horses' hooves. They shaded their eyes to look back and screamed. It was. Pharaoh and his army were coming to get them. Pharaoh had changed his mind again. Get my slaves back, he screeched and charged out into the desert after them with 600 of his fastest horsemen and every single chariot in Egypt. What were God's people going to do? In front of them was a big sea. It was so big, there was no way around it, but there was no way through it. It was too deep. They didn't have any boats, so they couldn't sail across, and they couldn't swim because it was too far, and they would drown. They couldn't turn back because Pharaoh was chasing them. They could see the flashing swords now glinting in the baking sun and the dust clouds and chariot after scary chariot surging toward them so they did the only thing there was left to do panic we're going to die they shrieked don't be afraid moses said but there's nothing we can do they screamed god knows we can't do anything moses said god will be with you trust him and watch but there's no way out they cried god will make a way Moses said. Another minute, and it would have been over. But then the strangest thing happened. God made the pillar of smoke move. It moved behind his people and hid them from the Egyptians. Then God sent a strong east wind to blow all night long. It blew on the water of the big sea. It blew it to the left and it blew it to the right, until it blew into two towering walls of water. And there, right through the middle of the sea, a muddy pathway opened up, and God's people walked across on dry land. When the Egyptians tried to follow, the walls of the water crashed down on them and swallowed them up. God's people were safe. They danced and laughed and sang and thanked God. When there had been no way out, God had made a way. Many years later, once again, God was going to make a way where there was no way. From the beginning, God's children had been running from him and hiding. God knew his children could never be happy without him, but they couldn't get back to him by themselves. They were lost. They didn't know the way back, but God knew the way. And one day, he would show them. Hey guys, it's me, Calvin. Here's today's question. What can we learn from the story of Moses? Even though God had just let his people out of Egypt, there was still hardships but we can learn that god is always with us even though it seemed that all was lost and pharaoh had gotten the israelites back 
God made a way. Even though things look very, 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 very bad, we have a good God who is with us. He's provided before, and He will do it again. Not just once, but a gazillion times for everybody. He provided a path across the ocean, and God is that path through the sea of troubles and darkness. And that path leads to heaven. This is part three of the William Carey story, published by Child Evangelism Fellowship, copyright 1970. Last time, we heard of William Carey's decision to follow Jesus. After he had made the dec this decision, he wanted to share with others. One day, he heard about people in far-off lands who had never heard about Jesus. It made him very sad that no one would go and share the good news with them. William continued to study. One of the things he studied was geography. He made a big map to put on his wall. On it, he wrote how many people lived in each country, what languages they spoke, and what gods they worshipped. Every time he looked at his map, he felt sad. In 99 countries, the people worshipped gods other than the one true God. When he thought of these people, his eyes filled with tears. His heart ached. He loved the people of the world just like God did. But what could he do? He was just a poor shoemaker. He could only pray for them every day. William kept busy making shoes, teaching, preaching, studying, and praying. He longed to spend all his time studying and preaching, but he had to make shoes for a living. One man in the village thought he was foolish to want to preach and said, You ought to stick with your business. My business, William answered is to work for God. I only make and mend shoes to pay my expenses. Another man for whom William made shoes was much kinder and wiser. One day when William delivered a bag of finished shoes to him, he asked, how much do you earn a week making shoes? About nine or 10 shillings, replied William. The man's eyes twinkled with his idea. Well now, how about this? You keep on studying and preaching, and I will give you an allowance of ten shillings a week. You won't have to make shoes any more. William thanked the man warmly. He also thanked God for the opportunity he now had to be a full-time minister. But as William preached, he could not forget those in other countries who were lost. If only he could help them. He talked to his other preacher friends about it. We must do something for the lost, he said. But the other preachers were all older than William. They thought he was just a young, enthusiastic man with a big idea. They did not pay much attention to him. But William would not give up. Whenever he had a chance, he would tell people, We must send missionaries to other countries that do not have God's word. One day at a minister's meeting, the leader asked if there was anything they should discuss. William stood up and said, Sir, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. Let's talk about these words of his. Don't you think he was telling his disciples and us to go? It was William's hope that the other ministers would see that the Lord Jesus meant for all of us to help tell people everywhere about him. The leader of the meeting was not pleased. He said sternly, young man, sit down, sit down. If God wants to get the gospel to all nations, he will do it without our help. Sadly, William sat down. The preachers just didn't understand. God wanted everyone to hear the good news. But how could people know without Bibles and without someone to tell them? What can I do, William thought and wondered. How can I help Christians see that they must send missionaries to other lands? He thought and prayed and preached about it. He talked to anyone who would listen. Soon, William would get an opportunity to do something about the problem he saw. But he had to be patient and wait for God's timing. We'll find out next week what that opportunity was.